All right, so let's look at number four of the 2021 AP Physics 1 free response questions here. As usual, if there's any mistakes I made, um, I'll put them in the description below. So a cylinder of mass M0 is placed at the top of incline of length L0 and a height of H0 as shown above and released from rest. The cylinder rolls without slipping down the incline and then continues roll, rolling along a horizontal surface. On the grid below, sketch a graph that represents the total kinetic energy of the cylinder as a function of distance traveled as it rolls down the incline and continues to roll across the horizontal surface. Okay. Um, so it's gonna so so basically, if I look at the relationship, basically we're gonna have potential energy. It's gonna get converted into kinetic energy, as he as as and you want it as a function of the distance traveled. Now he gets faster and faster as he goes in distance traveled. So we got to think about what the shape of the relationship is. So basically, he's gonna gain kinetic energy as he goes down here. Do they want um they want the total kinetic energy? That means the rolling and the translational kinetic energy. Now. Hopefully it makes sense that at, once you're at L0, you're going to move at a constant speed because you're no longer going to gain energy. So we're going to cap out at some value here and just stay that way that whole time. So that part's that's a worth a point to just make sure you at least recognize that part. This part's a little bit trickier. So what I'm going to try to do is attempt to um, calc now to calculate how the kinetic energy might look as a function of distance traveled. Well, one thing that comes to mind when I think about this is I think about our kinematics equation because during this motion, it should be moving at constant acceleration. So one of our constant uh, equations that relates displacement, the distance we traveled uh, versus uh, velocity is this one, v0 squared, or sorry, v squared is v0 squared plus 2a delta x. What this tells you basically is that v squared is linear proportionally to the displacement. So as it travels further, at this constant acceleration, it, v squared will go up linearly. And so that tells me that 1 half mv squared, if I just multiply by 1 half mv here, that's equal to 1 half mv0 squared plus uh, 1 half m times 2 is ma delta x. Now, the initial velocity is, it, I think it rolls released from rest. So we know the initial velocity is 0. So that means 1 half mv squared, which is the kinetic energy, is ma delta x. And so this is a linear relationship with its displacement. Okay, the acceleration is constant on the inclined plane, and, and the mass is constant, and so delta x as it goes up linearly, so then it's just going to look like a straight line. Okay. The cylinder is again placed at the top, is placed again at the top of the incline. Uh, a block also of mass M0 is placed on top of a separate rough incline of length L0 and height H0 shown above. When the cylinder and block are released at the same instant, the cylinder begins to roll without slipping while the block begins to accelerate uniformly. The cylinder and the block reach the bottoms of their respective inclines with the same translational speed. In terms of energy, explain why the two objects reach the bottom of their respective inclines with the same translational speed. Provide your answer in a clear, coherent paragraph. Okay. So this guy at the bottom is moving at the same speed as the cylinder one does. He goes down and he's moving at the same speed. But in terms of energy, this guy has more energy because he is spinning. He, they have the same translational kinetic energy because they have the same 1 half mv squared, right? Same mass, same velocity, all right? They have those things are the same. They started from the same. Well, starting from the same doesn't matter. But if they're moving at the same speed at the bottom, they have the same translational kinetic energy. But this guy is rolling, so he also has rotational kinetic energy. Okay. So what's ha so? How does this guy have more energy? Well, this is a rough incline. So they start with the same mechanical energy. They both start with mgh zero right, or M0GH0. They start with the same mechanical the, the energy, but they end with different energies. Now, for the, um, the one that's rolling without spinning, without uh, rolling without slipping, he didn't lose any energy. He conserved his energy the entire time, whereas the block had worked on it by the outside by friction. So the friction slowed down the block enough or did, or in other words, in terms of energy, did work on the block to reduce its energy. So, 
in terms of how I would write this, I'm, I'm not going to handwrite this because this is a paragraph one, so I'm going to just type it. It's a little bit faster. I would say both blocks start with the same potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy, gravitational potential energy. Um, the uh, or both, uh, what is it? It's a both the both the block and the cylinder. The um, the block loses some energy due to work done by friction, whereas the cylinder does not lose any energy. At the bottom, they both have the same amount of tra of linear kinetic uh, translational kinetic energy, but the cylinder has rotational energy, rotational kinetic energy. The rotational kinetic energy of the cylinder is equal to the work done by friction on the on the block. Basically, we would say that whatever whatever difference in energy here between these two scenarios must be due to the work done by friction that reduced the energy on that block. Um okay and so that's that's it that's that's how I would do, do work energy I think I explained everything that I would put in to um, a paragraph there